Yes, it is almost done. Okay, so question number two. So it states the uh, very general principle of uh, P block and the elements that we describe the acidity and basicity of the oxides and the hydroxides of uh, period three and uh, fourth period in general. So this question is mostly related to uh, that. Normally we don't study them separately, like S block and P block separately, but during the, in the period that you need to know uh, what are the elements and they are uh, oxides. Basically there can be many oxides, but in general, what is the most abundant one? and uh, how to classify them based on their acidity and basicity okay so this question is based on uh, third period so third period you have uh, sodium uh, magnesium aluminium silicon prosperous sulfur chlorine argon so based on that we have to uh, come in on their acidity amphoteric nature or basic nature so you have given the uh comments about the oxides so that is one question then the second one is they have asked how electronegativity atomic radius ionization energy changes from uh, left to right uh, and uh, i have an important comment here that i took it from the uh, evaluation report that is very important to show uh because uh, this is this was important because some students might uh, draw the variation that we discussed last time about this zigzag uh in that case uh they have given only one marks uh because it is important to show the variation like using the uh, inequality marks uh, regarding the uh ionization, crystal ionization, energy curve, okay, the variation. So we will start with this uh, question. So today I'm mostly going to use the board because it will be very easy for me to go faster as well as uh, it will be easy for you to understand the concepts, okay. Okay, so first I'm going to set up the board for a little bit. Okay. Right. Okay. I hope you can see. Right. So we will start with uh, question number two, first one. So we have the elements uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, and we have prosperous sulfur chlorine okay so argon we don't have argon oxides noble gases so sodium we have uh, sodium oxide na2o and magnesium we have mgo aluminium al2o3 silicon uh, sio2 then phosphorus or uh, as far as phosphorus is concerned, we have many oxides like uh, P2O3, P2O5. Uh, the, but to consider about its acidity, it is uh, very easy to mention about the oxide with highest oxidation state because you can easily predict the behavior, right? So you can write like either P2O5 or P4O10. It exists as P2O5 or either P4O10, okay? Then we have sulfur, the most important one, SO3. And chlorine, again, you know, there can be many oxidation state, plus one, plus three, plus five, plus seven even. So the easiest way to uh, predict the uh, acidity is the highest oxidation state. Uh, that is uh, Cl2 or seven. Okay. So how to predict this acidity? So out of this, okay, you should remember, Aluminium, this is amphoteric. What is amphoteric? It reacts with either acids or bases, right? 
For an example, uh, aluminium reacting with HCl will give aluminium chloride, AlCl3. And in the meantime, aluminium also react with base. For an example, sodium hydroxide, it gives uh, sodium aluminate. So aluminium in principle is amphoteric, so as it's oxide alpha also. Then uh, from there to left hand side, mostly all are basics in nature, right? So for an example, sodium, you know sodium hydroxide, it is very strong, okay? So in principle, it is strongly basic. So this basicity is little bit lower. So this can be written as this basic or either weakly basic. You can use weakly basic as well because magnesium hydroxide, if you remember about the reaction of magnesium oxide with water, that is how you predict its nature in principle. For an example, sodium oxide, when you put it in water, okay, there can be sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So this is strongly basic. Magnesium, magnesium hydroxide, yes, it's a little bit strong basic, but still, if you can remember, magnesium hydroxide can precipitate after the saturation. So uh, you might see at pH around 10, that magnesium hydroxide can precipitate a little bit. So yeah, so it's basic or slightly weakly basic. Then we have amphoteric. Then when you go towards this direction, so it starts to become acidic. So the most acidic one is this one. So you can predict that as very strongly acidic, okay? Then this becomes uh, strongly acidic. This becomes weakly acidic. And this becomes very weakly acidic, okay? So that is the trend. Strongly basic, basic amphoteric, very weakly acidic, weakly acidic, strongly acidic, very strongly acidic. So that is the trend that you need to know. And the second question uh, illustrates that, um, okay, so the electronegativity, so this is very uh, what uh, straightforward about the electronegativity. So you know uh, in the period when you go from left hand side to right hand side, the electronegativity should increase. For an example, uh, sodium, not, now the electronegativity is not for the oxide, for the elements. So for sodium, it is uh, like around uh, 0.9. This is 1.2, this is 1.5, this is 1.8, this is 2.1, this is 2.5, and this is 3.0. You don't need to know the values, but in general, the general trend, it increases. So you can either write down the electronegativity increases from left to right, or either you can write on as in using inequality signs, okay? Towards this direction, it increases. Greater than magnesium, aluminum. Aluminum is less than the next one, silicon, so, so as you can write, okay? So that is one. The second thing is uh, atomic radius. Again, you know, from left-hand side to right-hand side, uh, one electron is added each time, but you know, at the same time, the effective nuclear charge increases more, so from left to right, the atomic radius decreases. So atomic radius decreases, electronegativity increases, okay? And the last one is the first ionization energy. So first ionization energy, I told you before, always remember in the previous class also, this two to three and five to six. This is where the variation happens. So in general, this is the thing. So it's two to three and five to six, okay? So when you write down the variation, make sure. Now here in this case, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. So you can write down sodium. The first ionization energy is lower than magnesium. Then what is it? Aluminum, when, when you come to aluminum, you have to just change the symbol like this. Why? Because aluminum is less than magnesium. Okay, then you go further. So silicon is greater than phosphorus is greater. Then again, sulfur, the symbol is changed. Okay, then finally, uh, the last one is uh, chlorine. You can write down like this. This is the general trend. Okay, so try to uh, write down in this way. This is easier. Or either you can comment 
But remember, don't show this variation like this because you don't have such space there to write down that one as well. Okay. Right, so moving on. Uh, so the next question is, uh, they have asked for the, the general decomposition reaction of uh, nitrates. So if you have group two nitrates, MnO3, uh, in fact, this is, I think, asked about, uh, yeah, group two nitrates using uh, M as the metal. So this is the metal. So, you know, nitrate is uh, minus one, M is uh, plus two group two, so therefore there is a valency of two. So if you can remember about the nitrates of group one, first of all, you know, it forms like uh, MnO2, okay? MnO2, that is the nitrate of the metal. So group one, MnO2, then you have the uh, oxide form. But when you come to lithium, and in fact, group two nitrates, they directly grow towards the oxide, not at the nitrite level, okay? So here, you have to go towards MO, that is the oxide of this metal. Then from nitrate, it will form NO2, and finally O2. This is the one that is uh, released at the end, okay? But when you go for like uh, group one, MNO3, for an example, so it will form MnO2 and O2, okay? Not lithium, the rest of the elements below. So this is the general thing in uh, group one, this is general in group two. So the fact here is uh, you have to balance this, okay? So I can balance by taking two M's. So nitrate, nitrogen, you can see, there is a uh, two here. So to balance this two M, I have put two M here in principle. So two M and two M, there is uh, two oxygen, two oxygen here, four and two oxygen here, six. So three into two is six. So the only thing that I need to in general have to uh, balance here is N, okay? So nitrogen, you can automatically balance by taking four because here, two nitrogen times two, it is four. Here oxygen, then it becomes six times two, that is 12. So we can see there is there 12. So here there is eight and 10 and 12. So this is the way that you can uh, balance the equation, okay? Uh, let me check if someone is having to know, right? So it's okay. So the next question is uh, arrange the group two nitrates in the order of increasing thermal stability. Explain your answer based on the polarization of it. So I have explained to you this uh, numerous times. So basically you have uh, beryllium nitrate. Okay, this is the first one. Then you have magnesium nitrate calcium nitrate. Okay, so to explain the polarizability, if you can remember, I told you, polarizability, that is to distort the electron cloud. Okay, by either cation towards the anion or anion towards the cation. That is the way. But here, in this example, you can see nitrates are common, okay? So you cannot tell the effect of nitrate towards the cation, okay? Effect of nitrate anion towards the cation to check the stability, thermal stability. Here, because you have nitrates in all the sorts, what you have to do here is you have to predict the effect of the cation towards the anion. That is how you can predict the thermal stability. And if you can remember, I told you, if polarizability is high, the compound is more or less 
covalent in nature, thermal stability is lower if the compound is covalent. Now we will see. And if you can remember, I told you to have a good polarizability, the cation should have high charge and small uh, ionic radius. The anion should, charge, should have again high charge, but large radius, okay? Large radius. But here we don't need to consider about this one because we are not considering about the anion here, but we have to consider about this, the cation. So the idea, so how to write this? You have to write for all these salts, nitrate is common. Okay, and going down the group, ionic radius increases as beryllium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus, strontium 2 plus, barium 2 plus. Okay, then you can write, therefore, so radius increasing mean polarizability is lower. So you can write, therefore, polarizability decreases down the group. Why? Because ionic radius is increasing. So the polarizability decreases means, what does it mean? The compounds are uh, ionic in nature. down the group because if the polarizability is high we are in upper part more or less they are covalent but when you go down the group the cation radius increases which means the polarizability is lower which means the compounds more or less become ionic so when the compound more or less become ionic what is it the thermal stability increases down the group so last point therefore Thermal stability increases down the group. So this is how you need to explain this situation. Okay? That is the way that you need to explain. Okay? So the idea is uh, NO3 is a common ion. So the ionic radius increases as this. Therefore, the polarizability decreases down the group. So polarizability decreases down the group means the compounds are ion ionic in nature down the group. Uh, you can add another point if you need like this. Uh, the polarizability on the anion, okay? If you need, you can add the polarizability on the anion by the cation down the group decreases. You can write down that one without writing this the polarizability down the group decreases. You can write out the polarizability of the cation towards the anion down the group decreases, okay? Which means the distortion decreases. When the distortion decreases, more or less, the compound becomes ionic in nature. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can ask uh, in the meantime, okay? So the next uh, question is very straightforward because they are asking about uh, manganese. So you can write down the uh, electronic configuration. Uh, the only idea is like uh, you can uh, write down as either 3D5, 4S2, or 4S2, 3D5 at the end of the uh, electronic configuration, okay? And then uh, the next question is state the common oxidation states. So you can mention about uh, MN2+, plus. so that is plus two. And you can remember about MnO2, that is plus four. And you can uh, remember about MnO3, that is plus six. And the most important one, 
MnO4 minus, which consists of uh, Ma plus seven. So manganese highest oxidation state is plus seven. So you can write down plus two, plus four, plus six, plus seven, uh, any of it, okay? And uh, give the chemical formula of the oxides formed by uh, manganese in this common oxidation state, indicate whether uh, each of these oxides is acidic, amphoteric, or basic. So if you can remember the D-block, I am telling you again and again, uh, MnO2 is amphoteric, if you can remember. If you don't, please try to remember it, okay? So if this is amphoteric for plus four, so you have plus two, what is it? MnO, this should be basic. And an oxide that is after this, for an example, uh, you can either consider Mn2O7, Oh, this is where uh, it consists of plus uh, seven oxidation state, or either MnO3, where it consists of plus six. So both cases, it becomes uh, acidic, okay? These two are acidic. Very straightforward question. So the next one is give the IUPAC name of uh, KMnO4. So if you can remember again about our IUPAC nomenclature that I described to you many times. So KMnO4. Okay. So I told you first identify the positive ion and the negative ion. Okay. So here there is positive uh, potassium K plus and MnO4 minus. And then I told you write down the name of the positive one and keep a small space and write down the name of the negative one, okay? And I told you when you uh, when we uh, described the IUPAC name of the positive ions, so we described three things. One is uh, cations with a stable oxidation state, variable oxidation state, and uh, complex formation. And even for the anions, stable oxidation state, oxy anions, and complex formation. So what is it condition is here? First one is K plus, it is stable. So we just write down the name that is potassium, right? No oxidation state at the end because this is the category where stable oxidation state. Then we come to the second one. This is an oxy anion. So this has variable oxidation state. For an example, MnO4 minus, MnO4 two minus is also there, plus seven plus six. Okay, so this has variable oxidation state. So here, this is an anion, so we use eight. So this is manganate and seven oxidation state. So this is potassium manganate seven, okay? So if there is a MnO4 two minus, and here it will be K2, so then again, it is still potassium, but potassium manganate six. So if you have like K2 MnO4, for an example, here you have two K plus and MnO4 two minus. So in this case, it is still potassium. And don't forget, even though it is K2 and you have two potassium plus ions, we don't use dipotassium, okay? It is just still potassium. This is potassium, no dipotassium. This is just potassium. And this is, will be manganate six in that case. Okay. And the uh, next one is, uh, they have asked about the, uh, why manganese has a lowest melting point and boiling point. So explain uh, in terms of the bonding, that is the easiest way to explain this, okay? So if you can remember the electronic configuration of uh, manganese, just, it was, uh, 4s2, 3d5. So, so, how can you explain this? Okay. Uh, let's say we have any questions. Ah, okay. Okay, we have a question. Why does polarization uh, decreases down the group? Okay, so the, the idea is like this. So we had uh, beryllium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, calcium 2 plus. 
right? Here, uh, when you get the radius, it's like this. Okay? When you get the radius, it is like this. And when you get the radius, it is like this. So we have beryllium 2 plus, magnesium 2 plus, and calcium 2 plus. Okay? And let's say uh, this is our anion. NO3 minus. So its shape is like this. The shape is same, okay? NO3 minus. Okay. So here you can see charge is same. Plus two, plus two, plus two. So what is the difference? The difference is size. So we need to think about charge density. That is the idea. What is charge density? Think about charge over size. So each case you have same charge. Charge is same. But size is small here. So you are dividing by a small factor size of the cation. Okay. So when you go down the group, Okay, what is happening here? The size of the cation increases, which means charge density decreases. So why polarizability decreases? Because charge density decreases. If the charge density decreases, what will happen here is the ability to distort the electron cloud. The ability to distort the electron cloud that is the polarizability okay that is the polarization power so the ability to distort see i have big lots of food in my stomach and my stomach is small i can give a big power when it is the volume is very big with the same amount of food no just imagine using that example it is the same way you have high charge in a small volume. So you can distort the electron cloud of the anion easily. But when you go down, the charge density decreases between I have the same charge, but my size increases. So I have more space here to accommodate all these charges than distorting the anion. So that is the idea. So did you get that? Is it okay? So we were discussing about uh, manganese. So it was uh, 4s to 3d5. So why this has the lowest boiling point and melting point? The first thing that you have to mention here, manganese has a partially stable electronic configuration where S is completely filled and D is partially filled. Okay, which means the electrons are delocalized among s orbitals and d orbitals, making them less available for, available for bonding. Because manganese are metal, so it forms metallic bonding. Okay, remember the point. What is the first point? The electronic configuration is 4s to 3d5. Then you have to mention this is a partially stable electronic configuration. Okay. Is it okay? Uh, is there more question? No, right? Why this is showing? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so you have to mention that electronic configuration. This is a partially stable electronic configuration. Then you have to mention so that the electrons are delocalized among S and 3D. So there is a less availability of the electrons for bonding because this is already partially stable. Therefore, what will happen? The metallic bonding and uh, metallic, in fact, more, more most importantly, the metallic bonds are very weak. So, so that the melting and boiling point are very low. So that is the idea that you have to mention, okay?
uh next question is uh, what would you expect to observe when a dilute ammonia solution is uh, added to an aqueous solution of mn2 plus and then left exposed to the air so this is directly from uh, d block so if you go through my d block tutorial i have explained this all the things okay so if you have a normally uh, mn2 plus solution and if you add diluted ammonia or either diluted uh, NaOH, what is formed? It will form manganese hydroxide, which is pale pink in color. And when you expose this to the air, it will get oxidized. Here it is plus two. It will oxidize to plus four MnO2, which is brownish black in color. So this is brownish black in color. And this is a uh, pale pink in color. Okay. But remember, I have seen like students write down this MnO2 as a black precipitate. Okay. Remember, this is not black. This is brownish black. You have to remember that brownish black, not black. If you write black, that is wrong. Okay. So the idea is uh, you have to first write. So they have asked for the observation. So observation is first, what is it? A pale pink color precipitate is formed which on exposed to air it turns brownish black in color you have to just write down the observation you don't need to write down mn hydroxide and mno2 is formed because they have asked only for the observation but if you want you can write down okay uh, the last one is an aqueous solution of kmno4 turns green yes upon addition of koh and on diluting the green solution with uh, or acid or a uh, water so it turns to a blackish brown precipitate is obtained so write down the balanced chemical equations to explain so i told you uh, if you have kmno4 it turns green so if you remember your manganese chemistry if you have kmno4 which means mno4 minus okay which means It is MnO4 minus, where it is uh, plus 7, which turns green upon addition of OH minus, which is MnO4 2 minus. Okay, so you should remember this. This is MnO4 minus to MnO4 2 minus. Okay, then what you have to understand here is. If this is MnO4 minus to MnO4 2 minus, this is plus 7 to plus 6. So what is happened here? Here there is a reduction. So if this is a reduction, the subsequent event that should happen here when you add OH minus KOH is oxidation. Right? So OH minus, what is to be, it is oxidized. That is the point that you should need to know. So in general, OH minus is oxidized to O2. So this is the way that you need to uh, think about this. Okay. Then what you have to do is, then you have to balance these two and uh, combine these two equations together. Okay. So how to balance? So here uh, atoms are balanced. So here this is uh, plus seven. Here this is plus six. Okay. So you have to just add one electrons to the side. So it is uh, minus one, minus one is minus two. And here there is minus two. Mass is balanced. Charge is balanced now. Okay. In the same way here, there is uh, OH minus here. So it is oxidized to O2. So first you need to balance the, um, uh, what is it, mass. So here, now try to understand this, okay? There is only one oxygen here, there is two. So to balance the uh, mass, you can put two here. That is okay, that is fine. But at the same time, think, now here you have two H minus. So in general, what we do is we add like uh, 2 H plus to balance the charge. Sorry, to balance H plus. 
But the problem here, remember, if you put 2h minus to balance it 2h plus here, it is okay. Okay. Now here you have 2 oxygen, 2 oxygen, 2 hydrogen, 2 hydrogen. Is it okay? But the idea is try to understand here what is the charge difference now? Think about the charge. Here you have 2 minus. Here you have plus 2. Okay. Now, how can you go from plus 2 to 2 minus? First, you have to go plus 2 to 0, then 0 to minus 2. So, what is the difference? Don't forget to take exact difference. Here there is a difference of two electrons and here there is a difference of two electrons. So totally we have plus four electron here. Because here four minus plus two, there is two minus, here there is two minus. So automatically it is okay. Okay. Now you need to uh, add these two. So addition, here there is four electrons, here is only one electron. So you have to multiply this by four. Because remember, redox reactions are homogeneous, which means if one species saw reduction by using a certain number of electrons, the same number of electrons should be used by the oxidation process. So here for the oxidation process, it used four electrons. So the reduction process also should use four electrons because here four electrons are used. But you can see for one manganate, it needs only one electron. Okay. So the advantage is four manganate can reduct, reduce in fact, using four electrons. So this electron here and this electron here always should be equal. That is the idea. Okay. Right. So that is done. So the next idea is when you have this manganate uh, uh, six anion and when you add water, again, this turns into a blackish brown precipitate. So what is it? What is the blackish brown precipitate? It is uh, MnO2. So then you have the second uh, reaction that is MnO4 to minus will go to MnO2 and you add water, right? So water again. So now here it is again, you can see plus six to uh, plus four. So again, this is reduction and this is oxidation, right? Water gets oxidized. So what is the fact that you have in water? You have H plus and OH minus, okay? So you, you need to remember here, when you have water, so if you want to oxidize one of these, this will be oxidized, okay? But the problem here is you cannot oxidize here again because it will form oxygen. And if you have oxygen, this reaction again will go towards this. So the, what, the reaction that happens here is not the oxidation of this OH minus towards O2. In the same way, in the previous example that we described, MnO4 minus reduced to MnO4 2 minus and OH minus reduced to oxy ox oxidized to oxygen. But here you can think in the same way. What is it? MnO4 2 minus to MnO2, that is the reduction. And H2O, you add H2O. In the previous case, you add KOH. So you add a H2O and you might think OH minus get oxidized to O2 because this should be an oxidation. But the problem is if you have O2 again, this O2 will react with this MnO2 and oxidize this to it is. So that cannot be the black precipitate that is forming because this is disappearing. So idea of this is very straightforward. Please go through the D-block chemistry because here, what is happening here is a disproportionation reaction. Okay, what is it? MnO4 2 minus reduces to this one. And at the same time, MnO4 2 minus oxidized to MnO4 minus. That is the idea. Okay. So you then balance these two separately and add. That's it. Okay.
Right, so give one important use of each of the following. So KMNO4, you can uh, think about it the primarily or oh, someone is left. Okay, right. So the idea is if you if you are not there, the idea is what the reaction that happened here is the disproportionation reaction. Okay, not the oxidation of water. Okay. So the next one is uh, the KMnO4. So they are asking about the important news. So in general, if you remember about your maybe childhood memories, where when you have these uh, bones in your hand, quickly they use someone some sort of KMnO4 solution. The more important thing is KMnO4 is a disinfectant. That is the uh, most important thing. And uh, in laboratory, we use KMnO4 to uh, prepare oxygen. For an example, if you heat uh, KMnO4, this one you should know, it will form K2MnO4, MnO2, and O2. Okay, KMnO4 when you heat, K2MnO4, MnO2, and O2. Okay, so we use KMnO4 in the laboratory to uh, prepare our oxygen gas. Okay, and uh, the next one they have asked is about the manganese uh, metal. Okay, so it, we, it is generally used for making alloys, steels, and everything. In principle, it's steel. Okay, then uh, give half reactions to show how KMnO4 behaves as an oxidizing agent. Uh, in acidic and basic media. So this is very straightforward because this is general reaction. Okay. The idea that you should know here is MnO4 minus in acidic media, it goes to Mn2 plus reduced. There is a difference of plus five oxidation state. And in basic media, it goes from MnO4 minus to MnO2. That is the idea. Okay. So you can write down MnO4 minus to Mn2 plus and MnO4 minus to MnO2. Now this happens in acidic media, this happens in basic media. Okay. Or either if you can remember the previous question here in basic media, MnO4 minus either can be reduced to MnO4 to minus. If you can remember, when you add KOH, it goes from here to here. So this is also a reduction, which shows its oxidizing nature. Okay, oxidizing agent. So the easiest way is to uh, show these two, then uh, balance these two. As far as you can uh, see, mass is balanced. So I can add 4H2 over here. And to balance the hydrogen, I can add 8H+. Plus. Then to balance the charge, you need to uh, add electrons. So this is a reduction. So I have to add electrons in this side. So eight plus minus seven plus seven plus two. So I can add five electrons. Okay. So in the basic media, we don't add uh, water. We add OH minus. But the trick is very similar because manganese is one, one. So oxygen, there is uh, four here, but there is two. So you can add uh, two H2 over here. And to balance hydrogen, you can add 4H plus. So this medium is OH, right? This is H plus medium. This is OH minus medium. So you need to add OH minus. But the trick is you initially balance this as you think this is in an acidic medium. So what I did, I balanced the oxygen using two water molecules and hydrogen using 4H plus. Then what you have to do is you add 4 OH minus towards this direction, this side, in fact, to balance the H plus, and in the same way, 4 OH minus to this side. Okay, so at the end, what will happen here is 4 H plus and 4 OH minus will form 4 H2O, and here you have 2 H2O, so you can cut this one and this one, there will be 2 H2O on this side. So the finally, you have 2 H2O plus MnO4 minus. You have a MnO2 plus 4OH minus. Okay. So this is the idea. Right? 
then now you now what you can do is you can balance the charge that's it so what is the approach acidic medium it is easy you balance the oxygen first in fact you need to check first the mass of the metal so it is equal here then balance oxygen then balance hydrogen by putting h plus then finally balance the charge using electron in basic medium again what you have to know you balance it as in the acidic medium and uh, equalize the number of protons that you add to oh minus on both sides then you add these two to make water and here you get the difference of water and put the additional one in the side and uh, finally you take this equation and balance the charge using electrons okay so those are the things that you can uh, do okay so that's it okay okay so the last question is uh, indicate two problems you may expect uh, when using kmno4 and oxidizing agent so important thing i told you when you have kmno4 you need to standardize so the first problem that in volumetric analysis is like kmno4 is not a primary standard okay and uh, the second thing is uh, if you can remember the anion analysis uh kmno4 cannot be used in the presence of cl minus and br minus because it quickly oxidizes those two so it is very difficult to use kmno4 in the presence of cl minus and br minus okay and the other thing is uh, if you expose kmno4 to ar so it quickly forms this uh, black precipitate so in cases where we use titration we make sure the kmno4 solution that you need is prepared freshly at the time of your need because you cannot prepare kmno4 solution like a sodium hydroxide solution and store in a bottle this is very difficult to do because some amount can be converted to i mean in fact it is reduced to mno2 from the blackish brown precipitate at the bottom of the bottle so if you need kmno4 you prepare at the time that is the important thing solution okay so those are the difficulties so cannot be a primary standard you have to standardize it cannot be used uh, with cl minus and br minus and uh, the next thing is uh, in fact you can uh, cannot use solution like uh, for titration for a longer period so because it will form mn2 precipitates all those things okay so question number 2 is done so this is a very long question okay but uh, i have to tell you this question is the one that most people have scored many marks okay 